Okay, in this session we're talking about special factorization process. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the first slide. This is what we call the difference of two squares. It's a special factorization process. Uh, a while ago, if you remember, when we multiply x plus y by x minus y, and we did the FOIL, we ended up with x squared minus y squared. This is what we call the difference of two squares. So our task is, if the difference of two squares are given to us, can we write them in these two binomials? Quite easy. Suppose you have x squared minus 36. This is an example of the difference of two squares. And it has two factors, binomial factors. So one way of dealing with this would be you have x squared, you have minus, and 6 raised to the second degree. Meaning what? Since x is to the second degree and 6 is to the second degree, you will see x and 6, x and 6 popping up because x times x is x squared, 6 times 6 is 6 squared. The sign that divides x squared, that, that separates x squared from 6 squared is minus. This minus is a product. If it's a product, then one of them has to be what? Plus, and the other one has to be minus. And we're done. Okay? Let me do another one. 4a squared minus 64. Okay. Probably at this juncture, you know, we have what? A greatest common factor between 4 and 64. So I can I can go ahead and take 4 out of. And then we end up with a squared minus 16. Okay. And then let's follow one, once again the rubric. A squared minus 16 is the same as saying a squared minus 4 squared. Then we could rewrite it as what? a and 4, another a and 4, factor this, one of them is plus, the other one is minus, don't forget the 4, then you end up with this result. Okay? Probably one more example and then, because it's not a very difficult concept to digest. It would be okay with it. Probably. Then you have 16x squared minus 49y squared. Here it doesn't have a greatest common factor, so we'll go straight to the difference of two squares. Write this in terms of something squared. 16 is 4 squared, so you have. 4 squared, x squared. 49 is 7 squared, y squared. Let me bring them together. So this would be 4x, everything raised to the second power, and then 7y, everything raised to the second power. So again, the factors are what? 4x, 7y, another 4x, and another 7y, the product is minus, so one of them has to be plus, the other one has to be minus. One more. Then we have, let's see this one, x to the fourth minus 81. Even though this is raised to the fourth power, this is also an example of the of two squares. To clarify this, I'm going to rewrite this in terms of squared. So x to the fourth, the other way of saying x to the fourth is x to the second raised to the second power. And h1 is also 9 to the second. So let me apply the formula. Then I have what? x squared and 9 and another x squared 
and nine because next to the second there are two of them. Then one of them is plus and the other one is minus. We don't have the sum of two squares. So this is prime, meaning what? We cannot factor this. But we can factor this one more time. Then this x squared minus nine, I can rewrite it as x squared minus three squared. This means what? Again, following the logic, x and three, another x and another three, one of them is plus, one of them is minus. We're done factoring. Then I'm going to bring the x squared plus 9. And that would be your final factor. The factors of x to the 4th minus 81 are these three binomials. Okay? Now we're done with the difference of two squares. The next item we are going to look at would be a perfect square. A perfect square. If I multiply x plus y by itself, meaning what? x plus y times x plus y. If you do the foil, I know how to, how you can do it, so I'm not going to waste my time on that. It means what? It is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And if I do x minus y, if I multiply x minus y by itself, you would get the same outcome except that the middle term turns to be negative. The one thing that you really need to look at is 2xy and 2xy. Always the middle term is twice x and y. Meaning what? You are multiplying x by y and you multiply it by 2, you get a perfect square. But what we are doing is we are going to reverse. Suppose this is given to us, how do we rewrite it as a perfect square? Let me start with this one. 4 n squared. Plus 20 m. Plus 25. Plus 25. Okay. <clears throat> now. Let's rewrite 4 in terms of something squared. So this is 2 squared m squared plus 20m plus 5 squared. Let, let me rewrite this as, instead of doing that, so this would be 2m squared. Okay. Once we write this, the key is to know which one is our x and which one is our y. I have 2m is my x, and then 5 is my y. If I multiply x times y, meaning 2m times 5, I get 10m. And then if I multiply it by 2, I get what? 20m. Guess what? This trinomial is an example of a perfect square. Now, I don't have to use the product and the sum. I have already justified this is a perfect square, so I'm going to write my x is 2m, my y is 5, and according to the rule of the perfect square, I would write it this way, so I end up with 2m plus 5 squared. This saves us our time in finding the product of the sum of the two numbers that we are looking for in a trinomial. Okay, let me do another one. <coughs> one 
144x squared minus 128x and then plus 25. 25, right? Again, let's rewrite this in terms of x squared. Uh, this term, 144 is 12 squared x squared minus 120x plus 5 squared. Right? Then let's rewrite it by bringing them together. 12x raised to the second power minus 120x plus 5 raised to the second power. Note that this is your x and this is your y. So all you need to do is just implement the formula, right? Okay, so 12x times 5 is 60x, right? And 60x multiplied by 2, or in this instance by negative 2, is minus 120x. We proved this is a perfect square. So how do we rewrite this? 12x, because the middle term now is negative, you put negative 5, everything raised to the second power. Okay. It's pretty much a simple stuff, you know, once we know how to implement the We do another one. So four in squared. Plus 20 and n plus 49 n squared. Now, again, the, the first step that we're going to do, I'm, I'm going to rewrite this in this term in terms of squared. So this is the same as saying 2 n squared. This one is 20 and n, and this is 49 is the square of 7, so 7n squared. Let's know our x and y. Our x is this one, our y is 7n. Now, 2 times 7 is 14, right? And 14 times 2 is what? 28. Let me change this one to 28. 12 squared plus 28. So, <coughs> we can have this one. 2m plus 7n squared. Because 2 times 7 is 14. 14 times 2 is 28. Let me give you another example where Not possible. How do you determine that? Suppose you have p squared minus 8p plus 64. So let's determine whether this one is a perfect square. So I can write this p squared minus 8p and 64 is 8 squared. But now, my, my x is p, my y is 8. x times 8 is 8x, or 8, p times 8 is 8p, but 8 times 2 is 16, but we have what, negative 8 in other middle term. 
So this is what? This is not a perfect square. Because p times 8 is 8p, and then you have to multiply it by 2. So you can see this kind of problem, so make sure that uh, to check the middle term before you assume that it is a perfect square. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, the third item that we are going to discuss in special factoring is the sum of two cubes meaning what x cubed plus y cubed all you need to do in this one is just plug it into the formula and it's not going to be that difficult so it is x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared this is the formula that we are going to use x cubed plus y squared x cubed minus y cubed which is the difference of two cubes of two cubes it is x cubed minus y cubed it's the same thing the only difference is the x plus y becomes x minus y be careful of the signs x squared plus xy plus y squared so these are the formulas that we are going to use to solve the sum and the difference of two cubes. So let's go ahead and do some exercises. So now let's do r cubed plus 27. Okay. And write it in this form. So before we do that, let's rewrite r cubed plus 27 as r cubed plus 3 cubed. So you know your r is x, your 3 is y. So go ahead and plug it into the formula. So this becomes r plus 3, because, because your y is 3. Your x squared is then your r squared minus, your r is x, your y is 3, so this would be 3r. And then your y squared is 3 squared, okay, and which is what? Which is 9. R plus 3, R squared minus 3, R plus 9. Okay. Let me do another example. So you have 27 C3 plus 1, 25. Again, this is a sum of two cubes. Let me rewrite it in the, term, in, in the form of x cubed plus y cubed. 27 is a cube of 3. So I can rewrite this as 3z cubed. 3 cubed is 27, z cubed is z cubed. 125, 125 is 5 cubed. So this is your x and this is your y. Now go ahead and plug it into the formula. So you have what? 3z plus 5. x squared is 3z squared minus 3z times 5 plus y squared is 5 squared. Again, simply plug it. Now you have what? 3z plus 5. Square this, you end up with 9z squared. Multiply this to 15z, and 5 squared is 25. So I think it's pretty much straightforward to do that, right? 
So let me do another, probably one or two examples. Yes. Let's use MEQ. m cubed minus a is m cubed minus 2 cubed. So your m is your x, your y is your 2. So this will be 1. We're going to do, go, go to your formula, the difference of two cubes, m minus 2, and then you are square, squaring m, m squared, plus the product of 2 and m, which is 2m, and then plus 2 squared, which gives us 4. So you have m minus 2, m squared plus 2, m plus 4. So it is the same as the difference of two cubes. The only difference is one of them is minus. Probably let me do one more and then I think we're set. One thousand K cubed. Again, this is the difference of two cubes. So let's rewrite 1,000 in terms of its exponents. It is 10 to the third. So this would be 10k to the third minus 27 is three squared, uh, three cubed. So I'm going to write three and everything goes to the third. Okay, 10 to the third is 1,000. Three to the third is 27. Now we're going to apply the formula, so it would be what? This is your x, and this is your y. Then you have 10k minus 3n. Then you, have, you are going to square 10k squared, right? Plus 10k times 3n plus 3n squared. I'm just applying the formula. So let's tidy this up, 10k minus 3n, 10k squared is 100k squared, this times this is 30kn, and 9n squared, and we've got factoring this 2 by 1. Okay, I think we are done for this week.